In this video, I will provide you with a little more information about structural loads in residential construction. And these loads are designed to withstand three primary categories of loads. Starting with number one, dead loads. These are the static permanent forces exerted by the weight of the building's own materials. This would include the weight of the roofing, sheathing, rafters, trusses, joist, studs, drywall, siding, and all of the other permanent structural and finishing components. And the weight of these loads are usually constant and relatively predictable. Next up, live loads. These are the transient variable forces imposed on the structure by its use and environment. Live loads include the weight of occupants, furniture, appliances, and stored goods. They also encompass environmental factors, most notably snow accumulation on the roof, which can vary significantly by geographic location and season, making these loads unpredictable because most of the time you don't know if someone's going to be installing a waterbed or a large library filled with books suggesting that the loading might need to be a little higher to remain on the safe side. And last on the list, lateral loads. These forces act horizontally on the structure and are among the most challenging to resist. Again, unpredictable. The two primary lateral loads are wind and seismic forces. Wind usually exerts pressure against the building's exterior surface trying to push it over, while earthquakes generate inertial forces that usually shake the building at its base and sometimes trying to tear it apart. So to protect it, the frame must be braced to prevent it from racking, deforming, or deforming from a rectangle into a parallelogram. Under these most of the time unpredictable horizontal stresses. And the fundamental goal of structural framing is to create a complete load path, a continuous system of interconnected structural elements that transfer all of these loads, dead, live, and lateral, from the roof through the walls and floors and ultimately into the foundation, which then dissipates them into the ground. And of course, any break or inefficiency in this path is usually going to create a point of stress and potential failure. And thanks for watching. If you enjoyed the video, let us know by hitting the thumbs up button or letting us know in the comment area.